So our dear Nancy is getting ready to um, um, uh, share with us and together we will do the prayer of illumination. But she's getting ready to share with you two readings, one from Ezekiel and the other one from Matthew. And um, I, I want you to just pay particular attention to both of these readings and, and what God is doing in these particular readings. The, the one with Ezekiel, and then she'll read Matthew, and just see how they fit together, how they fit together for such a time as this. And so I just wanted to just kind of emphasize that before our dear Nancy, Nancy comes up and she leads us in the prayer. Please join me for the prayer for illumination. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring, thine own spirit rule in all our hearts alone, by thine all sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Our first scripture reading comes from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. For this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountain, mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove their flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away, I will save my flock and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them and he will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Our second reading comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then they will say to those on his left, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, 
into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in, or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nancy, for the reading of the scripture this morning. As always, you did such a beautiful, such a wonderful, wonderful job. This morning, I want to talk to you um, on a subject that is, that is dear to my heart, a subject that sometimes when I see people in their their misery, uh, my heart weeps for them. And I know that we as God's people, we weep as well. And so I want to talk to you this morning on the subject of looking ahead to the king, looking ahead to the, to the king. Please pray with me. Dear God, please be with us today as we hear your word. Help us, God, to hear your word, that we might live your word. I pray, God, that you will allow my words to be your words, that you allow my thoughts to be your thoughts. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is Christ the King Sunday, or the Reign of Christ Sunday. And it marks the last day of the Christian calendar. And tomorrow starts the Advent season. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. And so our passages today, they carry a theme that I believe is perfect for the season that we're in a season where we are waiting for the second coming of Christ, a season where we are in anticipation of Christ's coming, uh, a season when we are looking to the king, looking ahead to the king. Before Nancy read the passages, I asked, for you to carefully listen to those passages. And I, I wonder if you kind of got the same conclusion or one of the particular uh, points that I want to make today. If, if yours were the same, um, do we have any online today? Any folks online? Got one person online. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. But there is two particular themes that run through both of these passages. The passages, passage from Ezekiel, as well as the passage from Matthew. Did you see the theme of justice and care? Did you see that? Did you see in the reading? Did you comprehend? Did you understand the theme of justice and care. 
What about the theme of the shepherd king? The shepherd king, that theme that ran through both of those particular passages. One of the things that you must know, and, and as, I was, as I was preparing for this topic today and doing my research, I ran across an article that talked about the recent riot in Dublin, Ireland. I think you were recently there, Nancy and Kurt. Well, there was a riot um, a few days ago in Dublin, um, Ireland, and, and it was, the riot was blamed on a far-right agitator group who were protesting against immigrants. And I began to think, wow, there's a lot of people in this world who are dissatisfied and who are angry. For whatever reason it is, there are a lot of people who are angry and who are dissatisfied. Then I started searching a little bit further and I found out, did you know that there is something on the internet, there's a site that you can go on the internet that's called Global Protest Tracker. You ever seen that? Global Protest Tracker. And, and what, is, what it does, it actually um, helps to illustrate how protests impact today's global politics. It was created by the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and it was created for researchers and decision makers and journalists. And, and they analyze and they compare and compare the triggers and motivations of the most significant anti-government protests around the world. And the motivations are considered to fall in one of three categories, economic, political, and corruption. Sounds kind of like what Ezekiel was talking about this morning. The tracker also relates the freedom status of the country at the time that the protest started, reflecting the status of the political rights and civil liberties in that particular country. In other words, in the status, they're either free or they're not free. They're free or they not free? You know, there are many people who are angry and dissatisfied, and they are because they lack the basic essentials of life or the resources, the resources to help them to live a better life. People want the basic things in life, such as food and shelter and adequate medical care, and to be treated with dignity and respect as all humans should. And in many cases, it is the government systems and or the leaders of government that create this gap of having and not having the basic things to live. People just want to live. People just want to have food on their table, George. People just want to have a roof over their head. People just want to have clothing. People just want to be treated with dignity and respect. People want to have an opportunity to live a dignified life one where their identity is respected. Their home is a pleasant environment to live in. They have food, proper medical care, the opportunity for an education, and their voices are heard. People living in poverty are often trapped because they are excluded from the rest of society, denied a voice, and they often lack the basic resources for living. Ezekiel this morning addresses that issue. 
If the prophet Ezekiel was addressing the world today, he would be speaking to many of the government and their leaders for their lack of justice and care for the people whom they have been entrusted. The poor and the weak, in a sense, are living in a state of exile. The poor and the weak, in a sense, are living in a state of exile due to being exploited by the more powerful and the wealthy. The poor and the weak are exiled from the promised land of abundant life as offered by Christ because there is a failure to see the needs or to hear their cries. Ezekiel has been directed by God to prophesy to the people of Israel. They are scattered and they're in exile because of the corruption of the government. They are weak. They are in despair. They feel hopeless because they are in exile because of the corruption of the government. The kings of Israel and Judah simply, simply did not care for their people. Have you ever had the feeling of not being cared for? Perhaps you Maybe you haven't. Perhaps maybe you felt as though that you weren't being loved by someone significant in your life. But to have a feeling of not being loved, to not being cared for, to have the reality of not being cared for is a mighty, mighty heavy burden to carry. In the passages before our reading, the reading before Nancy, Ezekiel addresses the government and the religious leaders of Israel. Ezekiel refers to them not as kings, not as the Pharisees, not as the Sadducees, but he refers to them as what? As shepherds, as shepherds. It's important to know that the image of the shepherd used in scripture as well as other ancient literature refers to a benevolent ruler, a ruler or king who is kind, or a ruler or king who is compassionate, a ruler or king who is giving, a ruler or king who looks after his people. So Ezekiel is not talking uh, just about any old shepherd. He's referring to the kings and government leaders and the religious leaders, those who have been entrusted with the care of their people, just like a sheep shepherd would care for his sheep. If you want to know how God wants his people to be cared for, look at the, the metaphor of how a shepherd cares for his sheep. So Ezekiel in the previous passage before our reading admonishes the shepherds, he admonishes the kings, he admonishes the religious leaders for caring for only themselves and not for caring for, not caring for their sheep. And speaking for God, he tells them that they only take for themselves, but they don't give to their flock. They have not cared for the sick or strengthened the weak or searched or searched and brought back the lost. Instead, they have ruled them harshly and brutally, and as a result, they are scattered. And you know why they are scattered? The Bible tells us that they are scattered because they had no shepherd. They had no shepherd. They had no shepherd. You might ask, well, what does that have to do with me? I'm not a shepherd. We're going to get to that. But here, and this is where Nancy comes in, the prophet not only speaks to the rulers, but he also speaks to the people who have been exploited. He brings a word of comfort to the people, saying that the Lord, get this, get this, this is God saying this. 
God is saying this. God is saying, the Lord, he's saying, I myself, oh. he says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. Now, how, how, how good can you get than that? You can't get any, any better than that. When God is, is actually saying, God is saying to each one of us today, you don't, have to, you don't have to depend on your government leaders. You don't even have to depend on your church leaders. You, you don't even have to depend on your church. I myself will be your shepherd. I myself. In other words, the Lord is saying, look. Look ahead to the shepherd king that is to come. And this reference that he is making, making uh, to, the reference is to Jesus Christ. Look ahead to, to the king. Look ahead to the Messiah. Look ahead to the Christ who will come. As it is the prophecy in verse 23, the Lord said that he will appoint one shepherd over them and his servant David will feed them. God further says that he will be their God and his servant David will be a prince among them. His servant David is Jesus Christ. Look ahead to, to what is about to come. Look ahead to what I'm about to do for you. I am going to send one appointed shepherd over you. And, and, and get, get this, get this. He said, I myself will shepherd over you. What does that mean? That means that Jesus Christ is God. I myself will shepherd over you. Jesus Christ is God. The prophecy of Christ coming, the prophecy of Christ himself being God. In anticipation, the people of Israel began to look ahead for the coming of the king, the shepherd who would care for them as a shepherd cares for his sheep. Today, today while governments are certainly held accountable, the church, the church has a higher calling and that calling makes us more accountable to others. The church is to be the shepherd of the people. We are called to not only care for the sick, heal the brokenhearted, and bind the injured. We are also, get this, get this. I'm going to start over. We are not only called to care for the sick, heal the the brokenhearted, bind the injured, but we are also called to search for and find the lost. Wow, that's, that's pretty heavy. That, that's pretty heavy. That's, that's one of those areas that we've been talking about for a while with evangelism and and uh, the, what's that, uh, the, the Book of Romans, we've been talking about that, 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 that God calls us to, to go out. God calls, calls us like a shepherd would. A shepherd would go out into the wilderness to find that one lost sheep. Search for that one lost sheep and bring that one lost sheep back to the fold. Even those who perhaps uh, were faithful at one time and were part of the flock and they, they moved away like we talked about this morning. They, 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 they became lost themselves. We as the body of, of, of Christians, we have a calling to search and recover. Search and recover. So, so you see that that particular theme of justice and care. But, but what about the justice part? We, we've heard about the care part. What about the justice part? God's righteousness is the justice part. God's word is the justice part. God's law is the justice part. We're not talking so much about the legal justice that, 
that we see in the court system. But God's word is all about justice. The justice of God, doing the right thing, doing the righteous thing, caring for others, healing the sick, binding the, the, the injured, healing the brokenhearted, going out searching for the lost, loving your neighbor, forgiving one another, being compassionate, being caring. All that is God's justice. You cannot separate justice and care. They go in the same bag. If you take care out, you got to take justice out. If you take justice out, you got to take care out. You cannot separate justice and care because care is God's justice. Here is God's justice. And Matthew, Matthew specifically speaks of judgment, justice, judgment, specifically speaks of that. Matthew, again, there is the image, the image of a king who was a shepherd. And as, 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 as Ezekiel, gives us the image of a shepherd to bring comfort. The passage in Matthew gives us, a, gives us an image of a shepherd or a lord or a king who will also judge, who separates the wicked from the righteousness. Ezekiel says that he will judge between the sheep of his flock. In Matthew, he judges between the sheep, the sheep and the goats. The goats are those who fall to fail, I'm sorry, the goats are those who fail to perform the works of mercy, who lack charity. They choose to build themselves up, to make themselves sleek and strong at the expense of others. They exploit and, and oppress the vulnerable. We may be able to build up for ourselves a small earthly kingdom, but in doing so, we exclude ourselves from the kingdom of God. But in building up ourselves, there's a question from Jesus that we must all answer. There's a question from Jesus that we must all answer. As we wait in anticipation we prepare, and if we prepare ourselves right, we will have the right answer. Jesus will ask the question, did you care for me? Justice and care. Did you care for me? Certainly, when Jesus says, I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you, you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. Certainly you don't want to answer that by, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you. That's, that, that's not the right answer, y'all. <laughs> that's not the right answer. Because as Christians, we should see Christ in every person who is in need. We should see Christ in the least of these. When Christ said, you didn't see me, you answer that, you ask, you, you ask the question, well, when did I see you? When, when, when did I have the opportunity to give you water? When did I have the opportunity to give you food? When did I have the opportunity to, to give you clothing? When did I have the opportunity to, to visit you? Christ is going to say, what you do to others or what you did to others, the least of those you did to me. Care and justice. Care and justice. As I said, this, 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 these two passages are perfect 
for the time that we're getting ready to move into a time of anticipation, anticipation of looking ahead to the king, a time of, of expectation of, of, of all that, that Christ has for us, but more so a time of preparation, a time of preparing ourselves. Bible study and, and prayer, but along with that goes caring for others. Caring for others. I, I, I'll be honest with you. When that question is asked of me, I certainly don't want to be on the end of, well, when was I supposed to do that? I was too busy. I was, I, I was preaching your word every Sunday. Every Sunday I was in front of your people and I was preaching and I was, I was going and visiting the sick and I was going to the hospital. But, 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 but if, even after doing all that, if I wasn't doing it for the right reasons, it means nothing. It means nothing. We as a church, not only as individual must care for the sick and the brokenhearted and the, those who are in prison, those who are lost, but as a church, the greater church, we are also called to fight for justice, for God's justice, to fight for the people who have no voice, to fight for the weak, to speak up for the people who are living in, in disruptive lives who are living in poverty. Did you know that ghettos were set up all over the world, not just here, but they were set up to separate people from the affluent? And ghettos, if you know anything about a ghetto, they're not in great places. But this is all part of not taking care of God's people. And that's what the, the kings and the religious leaders of ancient Israel were doing. So I'll close with this. As we go into the Advent season with great expectations, with great anticipation, we go also with the heart to prepare, to prepare for God's return, for Christ's return, to protect, to prepare for Christ's return so that we'll be a sheep and not a goat as he separates. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy, gracious God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word, oh God. We, God, I just thank you for your people of New Hope Presbyterian Church. I thank you, God, that they have hearts of care and compassion and justice, oh God. We pray, Lord, that that which we have in our hearts will, will go out and will touch the hearts of others, oh Lord that they too may have the same kind of spirit of care and compassion and justice. It's this, O oh Lord, that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.